there were five tragedies which befell Klal Yisrael on the 17th of Tammuz. Nishtabru Aluchais, Botel Atomit, Hufka Ha'ir, Sarva Postumis Es Atero, Vehemit Selem Behechal. So, if we look, the first thing was the Shviris Aluchais. For sure, the breaking of the Luchais was a qualitative change in the level of tearing Klal Yisrael. Rup Shimon Shkop, in the introduction to Shari Yosher, brings down, we find a fascinating difference between the first Luchois and the second Luchois. The first Luchois, a person learnt something in Torah once and he recalled it forever. With the second Luchois, a person needed to constantly revise, a person needed to toil. Explains Rib Shimon, because there was such a drop in what the status of Klal Yisrael was before the breaking of the Luchos and the after the breaking of the Luchos. Before the breaking of the Luchos at Mamad Ar Sinai, we went back to the Madrega to the level of Adam Arishan before the Chait, meaning no Yetzahora, no internal drive to do any evil. Therefore, there was no danger in a person learning any item of Torah once and it, him retaining it because he would be an upstanding good person by nature. With the Chet Egel, where we went down to our current status as we all have a very healthy or unhealthy Yetzirah, so it was necessarily that in order for a person to acquire Torah, it had to be his prime focus, something that he revised and invested his time in and became the suitable person to be utensil for retaining Torah. Botel Atomid, obviously once there was no longer Corbin Tomid, the pillar of Avoida, right? Says in Pirkei Ovis, Al Shleisha Tvarim Ha'ilamayme, the world stands on three things, Teiro, Avoida, Gmiros Chasonim, with the Shviris and Luchois, there was obviously an indication of a drop in the Omid of Teiro, Botel Atomid, for sure, there was a drop in the Omid of Avoido. Once the walls of Yerushalayim were broken, we know in the laws of Eruv, if a walled city is totally walled in, then essentially it is one domain, it is one community, and therefore, even though there's an added requirement of Eruv uh, Echatzeros and Shetup Mavos, but Midaraisa, it is one big community and you can carry. Once Hufka Ir, so it is now a collection of individuals, no longer one unit of many. So this was also an indication of, besides the actual breaking into Yerushalayim, but now the division of a society that was once unified into individual fragments, the pillar of Gemilus Chasodim, of unity of society. There's a, the Maharal, when he analyzes the Mishnah in Pirkei Avos, Al Shloisha Dvarim Ha'olam Oimeid, Al Atero, Al Avoido, Val Kminus Chasodim. So in his Akdoma to Pirkei Avos, he brings the Gemara Baba Kama. Gemara brings three opinions. Haim man deboi lemehavet chasida. Somebody who wants to be truly pious. So the Gemara brings three opinions. One opinion is, Lekayim Milida Avos. He should fulfill that which is in Pirke Avis. Another one, Lekayim Mili Dinazikin, that which is in the order of damages. Another one is Mili De Brachas, Brachas, things pertaining to blessings. Explains the Maharal, there are three areas a person needs to perfect himself. He says the world exists because of the good in the world. That is why after each day of creation, after each creation was completed, Vayar Elohim Kitov, HaKadosh Baruch Hu saw that it was good. And because of that good, the world could stand. So there are three areas of good that man needs to perfect himself. A man within himself to elevate himself into something spiritual and intellectual. Man between him and his fellow man and between him and the Rebbeinu Shalom. Allah Torah, says the Maharal, that refers to man elevating himself into something spiritual and intellectual. 
Avoido is perfecting his relationship with the Kodesh Bohu. Gmilus Chasonim is perfecting his relationship with his fellow man. That, says the Maral, is also the Gemara in Boba Kama. What do you have to work on if a person wants to be a Chazet? Lekayim Mili Da Avis, Pika Avis is all about Midas Tovis, refining your character. That is elevating yourself within yourself. Mili De Brachis is perfecting your relationship with you in the Rebbeinu Shalolam, appreciating and acknowledging that everything you have is from him. And then we have Mili De Nezikin, the fine print of Ben Adam Lechavero. How many people want to be a good person, but you know, unless you know the fine print of what defines damage, or what defines ownership, or what defines respect for other people's property and what makes it his property, you can't really be good and perfect at it. So really, if we look at the five things which befell us on the Shiva Sarbatamuz, the Shvira Seluchas is in Torah and the Hemitzela and Sarif um, Epistemis is a Torah is also to do with Torah. We have Hufko Ha'ir, where we became a bunch of individuals, society divided. We also have that is to do with Ben Adam Lechavera, and Batal Atomit is certainly with Avoido. Now, the Maral, when he reflects, Chazal tell us that Bayes Rishon was destroyed for the three cardinal sins of Gilu Arayas, Shvichas Domim, and Avoida Zora. Bayesheni was Sinas Chinom. Again, the Maharal speaks in a few places that the three cardinal sins re are reflective of the ultimate corruption of the three areas we need to perfect ourselves. Avodah Zorah is the ultimate corruption of our relationship with the Kodesh Bohu. Ritzicha, Shvichas Domim, is the ultimate corruption of our relationship with our fellow man. And he says, immorality is the most animalistic drive within a person. So a person that stoops and sinks to the levels of immorality, he has distanced himself as far as is possible from elevating himself into something spiritual and intellectual. Now, so obviously, if we are standing now at the beginning of the three-week period, in reflecting the morning on the Chubim, as the Rambam says, it is for us to remember the Averias of our forefathers and the Averias that we are still continuing to do to rectify them. We don't historically just sit back and reminisce. This is about life lessons and about making good. So there's an interesting Medrash at the beginning of Eicha. Medrash says, Says we find that a Kodesh Bohu overlooked, as it were, the three cardinal sins, but he did not overlook the fact that we despised learning Torah. And he brings a verse. Then he carries on the Medrash and says, quotes the, the Shamaru. says the Medrash that had we stayed learning, even though we'd strayed from what we needed to do, the light in the Torah would have put us back on what we would call the straight and narrow. There's a certain light, there's a certain elevation from learning Torah which would have put us back straight. The, the Mishnah says in Pirkei Ovis, Ba'asura ma'morim nivra ha'olam. The world was created with ten statements. Ask the Mishnah of Allah, Ba'amar echad yacholi boris. Couldn't have just been created with one statement, says the, man, the Mishnah, to give reward to tzaddikim that are keeping a world in existence which was created with ten statements, and to give retribution to the Rishoyim 
that are destroying a world created with ten, ten statements. Now, you know, when you look at the Mishnah, and if it would be five, and if it would be one, it's still a world which was created being destroyed or being kept going. What is the significance of the ten statements? So the Maral gives the following explanation. He says like this, if we have a look, ten is the smallest number which is a unit comprised of others. Up until ten is an individual number. Ten is a number but comprised of individuals. So the world was created as a unit with parts that fit together in an order. So Istakil Ba'uraisa Ubora Alma Koreshbohu looked into the world, into the Torah, and created a world. The world reflects a Torah pattern. Man, the world, we know the Torah has Tariyat Mitzvahs corresponding to the limbs and Ramachi Borim Gidim of a person that also the world is a macrocosm of man who's also reflected in the Torah. Everything follows the order of a Torah. So if a person steps out of line, so to speak, so he has now, if I have only one thing and I move it, you can't say something is out of line, but once I have a line, I have an order, and something has been moved out of line, we can now say, okay, it is out of line, it needs to go back. That is the significance of 10. Says the Maharal, the Gemara tells us that when a person is suffering, when achash begroina, achash beroishoi, yasok betera, he should toil, he should involve himself with terror. Says the Maharal, this is the same thing, because man is, what's happening to him is a reflection of his deeds. There's a beautiful Nefesh Chaim, by the way, the Nefesh Chaim says that came in Shira Adam Yasurim Boimalov. So I'll tell us when a person sees he's having some misfortune, when something bad, he's not feeling good in some part of his body, Yafash Pesh Bamaso. He should reflect on his actions. Pish Pesh Boloimotso. If he reflects on his actions and he finds, wow, I've got a clean slate. I've done nothing wrong. And you know what? I've got checks and all the good mitzvahs also. So, yitle bebitl terah. He should say it's bitl terah. Ask the nefesh hachayim, one second. Shouldn't that be on his initial checklist also? So it says, Rebchaim Belozhina, because when a, the limbs of the body and the Sefer Charedim has a very nice divide up and how it works, Every limb has the mitzvah's essay and lotase associated with it. So if a person sees that Yasurim Baimalav, that he's having some pain, some discomfort, so look at the mitzvah, says Reb Chaim Velozhina, pertaining to that particular part of your body. You got a toothache. Okay, let's go. How's, our, how's what we're eating? How's our lotion horror? How's our speaking nasty to friends? You know, go through the checklist. Pishpesh, if you go through the specific checklist, Veloy Matzah, and you find nothing is wrong, then Yitla Bebitl Torah, because Torah is all encompassing. So, with this Maral, we can, it fits in beautifully because the, the Torah is the order of the Bria. And when, when something is wrong within us, that's a reflection that something is out of place. We are reconnecting to the blueprint, we are reconnecting to the Torah and it realigns and puts everything back in place. There is an unbelievable Yerushalmi. First, we need to know the Babli. We know that Ben Seru Moire Nidoin Al Shem Soifoy. There's such a thing called a Ben Seru Moire, rebellious son. It's very, very specific halachas. Right, the Gemara says actually in Sanhedrin that Ben Moire loy hoyav loy osid lihiyos. There will never ever be such a case. So why does the Torah write it down? Drush v'kabel zchar. You should have what to learn. Right, there's a nice shmuz from Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. It seems we're lacking nothing. So why the additional piece? That's a separate discussion. 
So the Yerusha, the Babali said the Mishnah says Nidon al Shem Soifer that the Ben Serer Moira is not punished for that which he has done, but Mutav Shiyamus Zakai al Yamuschaya because he's going to have such a slide so fast and so bad. It's better that he dies innocent and we prevent him from really falling into total degradation. So the Mishnah, the, the Gemara explains, you know, he, he'll ha, he has these very uh, expensive habits. He's going to finish off uh, his piggy bank, I guess, and then he's going to go to his dad's account, and then that's going to be finished, and then he's going to, Soifu Melastimus Abrius is going to go stand on the highway and, you know, be a robber and kill and steal and do all of those nasty things. So Mutav, Shiyamu Zakei Ba'al Yamu the Yerushalmi adds, and it's going in order of severity with the most severe lost. So the Yerushalmi says, so it says, Osid Ligmor Nechseyovit, Ves Nechseyamo. He's going to clear out his dad's bank account and his mom's bank account. V'yoyshev loy b'parshas drachim, u'mekapech es abriyos v'hoi regas in afashas. And then he's going to stand on the street corners and on the highways and he's going to steal and he's going to kill. The soifoy. And you know what the end of the Ben Sayer Umayri is? Shoicheaches Talmudoy. He's going to forget his learning. Now, if you would ask, you know, almost anybody that I know, I mean, you know, Vital Terror is a severe crime, but we've just discussed the most severe of things, you know, Melastomis Abrius, and he's going to kill people, Vesoifai, and you know what? The worst thing he's going to do when he's going to finish and forget his learning. So I heard from my Rebbe Zichon Livrocha, Rav Guzman, and I saw also that in Michtev Melio, Rav Desla brings, he heard this pshat from the Ponovitcher Rav Zichon Livrocha. It says pshat like this. The Medrash tells us that Amor Shabo Machzirin Lamutov, that if a person has a connection to Torah, he ultimately will come back. The Torah will illuminate the way he will make it back. So if we are killing a Ben Seru Moir Al Shem Soifoi, so long as he would still retain a connection to Torah learning, as far as he would fall, he would make it back up. But Soifoi Shocheach Es Talmudoi, he's never going to make it up. And therefore, when he hits that rock bottom of Hoyregas Abrios, he's going to be staying there. So we see <laughs> it's quite a it's quite a powerful statement that Yerushalmi. Now, there is an interesting Gomorrah in Moid Cotton. You know, anybody that goes to Levias a Gedolim is Gomorrahs that a lot of people say over at Levias. When Ravina was nifta, the Gemara says in Moed Koton, ki nafshi de Ravina, so it says like this, posach aleha so this eulogizer said, t'morim higiu roish el tzadik katomor, nosim leilois kayomim, let's turn days into nights, sorry, nights into days, on somebody that was mesim leilois kayomim, who himself turned his nights into days. So I saw Rabbi Ramsky Zechrin Livrocha asks, he says, surely this would be a fitting hesped for any Talmud Chacham. If the emphasis over here is the diligence, is that smarter, that he's learnt as much at night as he did by day, so why specifically on Ravina? Why was this a hesped said on Ravina? Says Rabbi Ramsky beautifully, he says like this, there is a Rambam, a Chuvis Rambam, Quoted by the Ritva. There's a Gemara in Yume, Dap Nun Zayin Amud Aleph, where Rava made a statement and Rav Yirmiya replied, It's because you're from a dark place like Bavel that you're making the dumb statement that you are making. Right? Hani Bavloi Tipshoi, stupid Babylonians. It's a statement which recurs a couple of times. Says the Ritva, in the name of the Rambam, on that Gemara, he says, the Pasuk, Rabbi Yirmiya was the one that said, when it says in Eicha, that we sat, that you, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, sat us down in the dark like dead people. That is Talmud Bavli, that is referring to the Torah of Bavel, says 
the Rambam in a tshuva, the Ritva brings it over there, that this was in the original settlement, the early years of Klal Yisrael in Bavel, the time when there were Redifus, when the times when we were persecuted. But he says later on, there was a tremendous renaissance of Torah in Bavel. In fact, the Chesimus at Talmud with Rabina and Ramashi was in Bavel. So even though that initially it was dark and dismal and the Torah over there was weak and low, but later on there was a tremendous renaissance. So that says Rabbi Bramsky, Rabina was the Chesimus at Talmud, him and Ramashi wrote the Gemara. So what more of a fitting Hesped to say on specifically Ravina that Nosim Leilois Kiyomim, he turned the night into day. What Bavel, about which was said, Bamachshakim, is now a pillar of light. Rabbi Say, we are, Baal Hashem, our once heard from Rabbi Simcha Vassim and Zichon Libracha, he says, after the war, the generation after the war was a very small group of Loim Dei Teira. It follows, therefore, that the quality and the quantity was nowhere, anywhere near what was before. But Reb Simcha Vassim, and I remember I ate by him, he said to me, you must know your generation, there's an Oilami Yeshivas again, there'll be an unbelievable renaissance of Teira. Now, Baal Hashem, within our Tzibur, there is an unparalleled re- crowd of tens of thousands of B'nai Torah globally. But there are places, there are cities, where 80% of Klal Yisrael have zero but zero affiliation with even a federation, with even a Zionist organization, with anything. And it is time to say, okay, I... We have a mitzvah, Veshinantum Lebonecha of Talmud Teiro. The Rambam, when he brings down the halacha, the mitzvah of Talmud Teiro, he says, Lilmoid Ulelamid, to learn and to teach. That is the mitzvah of Talmud Teiro, is not just learning for yourself. In fact, there's a very interesting Loshna Gemara. The Gemara says that a person has to teach his kid, and somebody who's who father never ever taught him Torah so the Gemara says he has to teach himself it doesn't say a lotion of Lilmoid he has to teach himself right that is the Seder of teaching there's a Meridika lotion in the Choyva Salavavis I just saw it quoted yesterday I thought I'd share it with you it's in Shar Ava Sashem Perik Vav the merits and the credit for somebody that believes. Even if you get to the most exalted high level in, 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 in Avoda Sashem, and even if you be close to Nevi'im and Malachim, right? It is not comparable to somebody that instruction helps others to go on the correct path. To bring people that are Roshoyim to be Oyvde Hashem. Somebody that is metakan himself to the point of Nubu and Malachim cannot compare to somebody that helps somebody else back. All everything they do and everything where they do it, you get credit for. There's a famous story. The, I heard from a friend of mine who's Bobby grew up in Ponovich. See, so asked her, Bobby, do you remember Rabitzel of Ponovich? He says, for sure. He was a Rob. He said, what do you mean he was a Rob? Says, well, the Panovich Rov, after him, he, was, he had his hands in so many things. He was always busy with so many things. So, story goes, R- the Panovich Rov married the Vilkamir Rov's daughter. Rabariya Leib Rubin was a Goyen Oilom. 
And Rav Arya Leib Rubin knew what a Baal Kishrin, what a fantastic Talmud Chochem the Ponovich Rav was. In fact, Rav Chaim Shulevitz, when he was Maspid, the Ponovich Rav said, we lost the Shagash Arya of the door. In, in Kishrin, in, 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 in genius, and in Torah that he could have become, he said, we lost the Shagash Arya. So the Ponovich Rav's father-in-law said, I want to go with you to the Chavetz Chaim for a Din Torah. I want to take you to court. I want you to go to the Chavetz Chaim and ask. I took you as a son-in-law because you are such an outstanding Talmud Chacham and here you are setting up yeshivas, running a base Yaakov. You are so preoccupied in Soch Sibur, in, 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 in albeit it's Dovah Shevikdusha, but you know, the, the guy is sitting and learning 20 hours a day that I, what I was counting on, I'm not getting. So... Rabbi Yaleb said, you go to the Chavetz Chaim and you ask. So it's well known the Chavetz Chaim had Ruach HaKodesh. And it's recorded that when the Ponovich Shirov arrived in Radin, so the first thing he says to the Ponovich Shirov, the Chavetz Chaim, he says to him, how many black Gemara did you learn today? Chavetz Chaim says, I learned 200 daps, the Ponovich Rav, 200 daps. He says, I have 200 Talmidim that learned a daf today. So I learned 200 daf. That was the answer that the Chavetz Chaim needed in the Din Terah. In other words, true, I myself can lock myself, sit myself in a corner. But all the Terah that was learned because of the Chavetz Chaim, the Chavetz Chaim says that was the 200 daf. I learned today. Rabbi Sai, anything we can pass on, says the Chavis Alavavis, right? It's like a guy that is not working on big profit, but is working on volume. If you've got, the more people you get involved, and the more Torah you teach, Ha'ma'or Shabbat, besides the, the Ma'or Shabbat, the, 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 the illumination that they'll give them in terms of B'machzir and Lamuto, but everything they learn. Now there's a myriadic of Meshech I want to end off with. We know, Chazal tell us, that the Nadim could visualize, could see the schar for somebody that marries his daughter to Talmud Chochem, to somebody that financially helps a Talmud Chochem, but the schar of a Talmud Chochem himself, ein loyrosa. No eye is capable of seeing that. Explains the Meshech Chochmah because marrying your daughter to a Talmud Chochem, financially assisting a Talmud Chochem, that is something material. That is not something muscolous in the, in the intellectual. So therefore, the schar is visible, can be perceived. But he says the schar for Torah, he says, is above and beyond. Now, writes the Meshech Chochma. Somebody that does activities and does programs to make from the children of Amarotzim Talmine Chachomim Velasois Anoshim Talmudioim Schorei Godel Adki Omru Imtoitzi Yakar Mizolel the reward is so lofty, is so big, that it's like not perceivable even by a Navi. 